Hi, uh, hello, everybody. It's a great honor for me to participate in this event. And I hope you uh, now you see my screen. And uh, I, the topic of my presentation for today is the additive manufacturing uh, of geopolymers composite. Uh, a little bit introduction about uh, the geopolymers. And the next I would like to speak uh, why uh, the 3D printing become more and more popular in, especially in, uh, actually in different area of our activity, but especially in the construction industry. Uh, and the next I would like to a little bit speak about the materials requirement for uh, this additive technology. Uh, and on the end, I would like you present to uh, exemplary project uh, financed by uh, financed from European Union. One is our national project, and the second uh, one is uh, uh, made from our um, uh, made from university from actually from the city and from the university from Finland. Uh, where I, um, I a little bit help with this project as an uh, international expert. Uh, both are quite similar because they're connected, of course, with uh, 3D printing of uh, geopolymer materials. Uh, so why uh, we would like to develop uh, such material as uh, geopolymer? Um, the main reason is uh, that this... Uh, uh, technology connected with this uh, traditional concrete uh, is uh, very, very hard influencing on uh, on the environment, uh, especially as a pollution, as a CO2 emission, and uh, uh, large amounts, especially because the large amount of energy. Uh, use it for the creating uh, the concrete. Uh, in case of uh, geopolymers, um, this uh, energy is, the estimation are that this energy is uh, four to eight uh, times less um, influencing on uh, the environment. Uh, we have uh, lower emission of CO2 and also uh, lower emission other um, harmful substances uh, such as sulfur, such as uh, also um, other oxygen of the uh, and nitrogen. Uh, and uh, what are exactly the polymers? They are just a group of materials um, that we usually receive uh, by alkali activation. Uh, this, uh, these materials, according to their properties, um, a little bit um, are similar as a, uh, as a concrete. Uh, but they uh, are created in a different uh, process. Uh, this uh, this group of materials was actually mm, invented invented by uh, the Joseph Davidovich. It is a French uh, scientist, and uh, actually he named this uh, group of material. But of course. Um, Actually, as the material, this uh, uh, materials exist also uh, before, and also um, Professor Davidovich uh, uh, create a whole uh, whole philosophy connected with uh, this kind of uh, uh, materials, and um, they um, popularize uh, this topic on the world. Uh, nowadays, this uh, work. Uh, on this group uh, of the geopolymer are made uh, actually on the whole world. This is very popular material in uh, Australia. Uh, it is happened by this uh, regulation in this country that is quite easily applica apply, uh, apply this material uh, for different purpose. In the Europe uh, where and uh, USA, especially the concrete uh, industry is very 
um, have a very uh, is very influential, and because of that, um, there is uh, there are some problems with uh, regulation, uh, and uh, um, actually there of course made some research, some small application, but it's not such a large scale for um, using geopolymers for uh, building purpose. Uh, and here you see just uh, orientation um, where this material are placed uh, according to the different one uh, groups. Uh, some of uh, scientists uh, just uh, um, some of scientists just uh, uh, show that it's a uh, geopolymers that is some uh, kind of group amongst to this alkali activated, uh, uh, activated materials. The main difference is internal structure. Uh, the internal structure go, go polymers is uh, three-dimensional and alkali activated, it could be just two-dimensional network. And comparison with uh, mm, other building materials, uh, comparison, for example, with Portland-based cement, uh, there is low amount of calcium in the geopolymers, but the higher uh, amount of uh, aluminum. Uh, for the orientation, uh, here is uh, just my scheme as the material are made. You just have uh, um, some kind of solid background. It could be um, metacholine, it could be uh, clay, it could be uh, also some waste materials such as fly ashes or slugs. Uh, the next we join it with some kind of uh, alkyne activator. It is usually um, uh, it is usually alkyne based on sodium or potassium. And next we mixing it. Uh, sometimes we add there also aggregate, but uh, aggregate is not uh, reactive part of this uh, mixture. Uh, after the mixing process, we have a process of uh, hardening and uh, creating this inter international structure, um, three-dimensional structure that is characters for uh, this material. It is mainly a network connected with the aluminum uh, ions. Uh, and we receive our uh, Joe polymer. Uh, the most popular building, uh, binding materials are uh, kaolinite. Uh, kaolinite uh, we use after this uh, active uh, after calcination process, so usually as a metacholine. We also have uh, calcinated clays. <laughs> this clays could be also received from uh, the west. Uh, uh, building uh, uh, materials, for example, from um, after the process of the uh, destruction, the houses we receive uh, some building waste, and uh, it is possible also receive some uh, waste brick clays. Uh, then, large and the most interesting from the scientific uh, group, there are the different kinds of waste. Um, a lot of this waste uh, could uh, came from uh, energy industry or um, also mining industry. Uh, there is such uh, different uh, different kind of fly ashes, uh, different kind of slugs. Uh, the uh, it's depend on the it's depend on the internal composition if the slug is. Uh, uh, suitable for use for these geopolymers or not. If the slug is rich in aluminium and silica, it will be nice material for um, it will be nice material for that purpose. Uh, we also may use a waste gla glass um, because there is also material rich in uh, silica. Sometimes we add a little bit aluminium. Um, from uh, from that kind of waste, uh, red mat that is uh, waste from production of uh, aluminium uh, and uh, from industrial process. And as I said before, different 
mind tie links, uh, and different gouges that are usually um, the waste products from uh, mining industry. And in the Europe, there is quite a high amount of uh, this kind of waste. Uh, also, uh, also there were some trials made from uh, other natural and artificial alu uh, silica aluminates, uh, something like zolite, uh, something like uh, even tooth uh, for this purpose. All of them is possible to use as a base for the geopolymers. Uh, and the next element is activator. Um, activator is usually uh, alkali based on sodium or potassium. Uh, there is a most popular one, but nowadays, to, but it's also the element of the geopolymer that is the most influencing on the environment. And because uh, we would like to uh, limit this uh, um, this influence on the environment. We also use uh, to also try to create this geopolymer based on phosphor, uh, phosphatic acid. And because there is uh, mm, there is uh, there is not such uh, the amount of energy for this uh, production of the acid is lower than in case of uh, alkali bondings. Uh, and, uh, and the next, uh, why we actually, um, what is, uh, what, what we actually receive and why this uh, material are so, uh, nowadays so popular, uh, why this uh, research on this material actually is so, so popular. Uh, they have, uh, uh, very nice uh, mechanical properties. Uh, they are usually uh, they are usually better than uh, traditional concrete, or the same as the uh, as the traditional concrete. It depends uh, on the raw material we uh, use it for this production, and also a little bit uh, um, for a process. Uh, we have uh, this material that are usually uh, resistant for aggressive environments, especially if we think about the different kind of acids and salts. This is important because the pollution in our uh, on our world is uh, become to be higher and higher, and uh, including the acid rains. Uh, this material gives us a uh, possibility to avoid destruction um, some kind of construction. Uh, also, the application the geopolymers is investigated in, um, for the purpose of fire uh, protection uh, as a fire wall, fire barriers. Um, this normal geopolymer is resistant for up to 1000 uh, Celsius degree. But also we sometimes receive the materials that are um, much more, uh, that are also resistant even out, up within uh, 1,200 Celsius degree. Uh, 1,000 is enough for a normal uh, building purpose um, because uh, the normal fire in case uh, so-called so cellulosa fire uh, in the case of uh, in the case of fire, something like office, something like residential house, it is uh, this kind of temperature. And uh, also advantages of uh, this using this material is that it's not toxic fumes do, uh, during the fire. Uh, this is opposed uh, opposition of nowadays popularly used material polyethylene. Mm, this uh, styropian, uh, if in case of fire, usually um, started burn quite quickly, and additionally, uh, the toxic gases as are emitted into this uh, into the air. Uh, also, the advantages is uh, quite easily uh, processing. Uh, 
and quite good um, processing properties such as uh, low shrinkage. Uh, it, uh, it is quite easy to form and to receive different shapes uh, from uh, the geopolymers. And of course, benefits for environments, but I um, was uh, speak about, uh, about, but I spoke about it uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, of course, it's also the other side uh, because um, actually, no, any material not, is not perfect one. Uh, so we have also some kind of uh, challenges, some kind of. Mm, problems connected with uh, implementing this uh, material into practice. Uh, similar as a concrete, this material have uh, relatively low tensile and flexible strength. Uh, and uh, because of that, uh, we try to reinforce it, it by different kind of uh, fibers. Uh, I will speak uh, about it a little bit uh, later. Uh, also, it's a quite brittle, um, but uh, it's still mo a little bit more, more ductile than uh, normal uh, concrete. Um, problematic is also cost of production, and uh, because of that, the geopolymers are not such popular because this uh, cost of production uh, strongly influences on uh, the component uh, the alkali components, uh, because this uh, raw material such as fly ashes is quite uh, quite cheap. Uh, and uh, the changing on the market of the alkalis, this um, um, caused that is uh, not so predictable the price of material during the some um, some period of the time. Uh, we, ha we have also uh, the main problem also in on the European market is lack of proper regulation. Uh, so uh, against to the uh, traditional building material, this material needs uh, some longer process to be applied for some specific application. There is uh, some kind of uh, elements that uh, they are made from draw polymer, as you see, uh, they may have uh, different colors also. They they are quite easily formed. Uh, this gray color is a natural one color received from, um, from the fly ashes. But using the pigments, we may change the color for other one. Even if we use the titanium oxide, we may receive a white color. Uh, and uh, uh, if we know what is the geopolymer, um, I would like to a little bit speak about this 3D printing technology, why I would like to apply this material for that purpose. Uh, this uh, 3D printing technology is quite... Um, the person from building industry are quite exciting, uh, this uh, 3D printing technology, because it has a lot of uh, benefits connected with uh, development, this technology for this, uh, for the different actually building uh, purpose, not only for a resi residential house, but also for, for the small architecture. Um, it is because uh, of the main reason is because uh, um, this technology gives our uh, freedom of the design, uh, especially for the architects. Uh, this is very important um, factor. Uh, using this uh, uh, using this three D printing technology, we may uh, receive uh, new shapes. We may receive uh, new geometrical forms. Uh, we may receive uh, the forms that are impossible to receive any other technology. Uh, actually, we may also receive the elements that are much lighter than traditional one uh, because we may print something that is 
that have a hole, that have a voids inside. And uh, we may optimize this shape uh, according to the properties. These walls could be uh, thinner um, and this shape could be more, uh, more curved. Uh, because of that, uh, it, the, the, the project, they are more interested for, uh, uh, for architects and they have a higher aesthetic value. Uh, the other uh, very important factor is reduction of the labor cost. Uh, it is especially because the, as actually we do not have such much uh, um, higher person for building. Uh, the whole process is usually fully automatized. Uh, we also improved, uh, because of that, we improve efficiency and safety. This uh, um, building, this uh, um, architectural forms may be printed uh, faster and uh, may be prepared uh, in more safety way. We do not need additional, uh, additional elements uh, such as uh, framework. Uh, just we print what we actu actually want. Uh, it also eliminated uh, some works uh, connected with works on the some higher, and because of that also um, make a safer the works in the construct in the construction industry. Uh, also, it is possible to use it uh, this technology use it in harsh environments. And there is uh, some project uh, made from ESA, uh, European Space, uh, Space Agency, that they would like to uh, print uh, the moon uh, shelters uh, from uh, the actually the moon, moon ground uh, using uh, 3D technology. Uh, and uh, because of elimination of the work of the um, of the uh, of the animation of the human work and uh, possibility to uh, use, the te use this technology um, fully automated. Uh, and of course, sustainability, uh, this uh, technology generates much less waste from the process of building and it could be, and because of that, it's a uh, uh, more uh, more friendly for a uh, for an environment. Uh, and uh, just shortly, because I do not speak about all of these properties, but I would like a little bit uh, show you that is uh, finding the proper materials for three D printing industry uh, for three D printing is quite challenging task. Uh, we need uh, the material must uh, have a lot of uh, properties, and we need to pay attention to different kind of uh, sometimes um, uh, very hard to receive properties. Uh, some of them, there is uh, totally different rheology of the material behavior, and from this is connected so-called pompability and extrudability. Uh, this material used for 3D printing in the same time must be enough uh, hard, enough strength to put on this uh, other layer. But uh, also, uh, it is necessary to uh, to be more uh, to be flexible uh, to join with this uh, uh, previous or subsequent layer. Uh, so the time of hardening is also very important um, important property uh, and. Uh, the rest of these properties, uh, there's uh, very important also a uh, short time of curing time in low temperature. 
and uh, this temperature uh, should be the best the temperature uh, that is around us um, uh, and as, as you as you know probably it's uh, uh, the most important uh, factor to that limited uh, using this technology uh, and uh, in higher temperature geopolymers usually receive better properties uh, because of that, the first application they are made in uh, in the countries where is um, where the climate is um, rather uh, not so harsh, but also we try to uh, apply it in lower and lower temperature. Uh, actually, um, as I said, uh, I will speak uh, a lot of about these uh, materials. Uh, we have uh, um, for this uh, 3D printing purpose, we would like to receive materials uh, where we would like to limit uh, the brittle behavior. And because of that, we think about this addition of the fibers. Uh, there is not possible to use uh, traditional uh, reinforcement as in uh, building materials as in concrete. Uh, especially it's not possible to use uh, these traditional steel bars. Uh, actually, the, mm, the best possibility, the easiest possibility is using this uh, short fibers that we have in the whole um, volume of the materials. It is also possible to use some kind of long fibers when we, when we have, when we apply it in the direction of this uh, 3D printing nozzle move. Um, this uh, uh, the research show us that uh, uh, the addition of this fiber is uh, quite efficient method of improving uh, mechanical uh, properties of uh, geopolymers. Uh, Mm, especially uh, the ductility and also the fibers limitation, uh, limitation the cracking. Uh, here you have uh, some small scheme uh, that uh, uh, if we think about this material durability and uh, material greenness, the best solution seems to be uh, geopolymers reinforced by uh, by fibers. Uh, and small information from the literature uh, about uh, what kind of uh, uh, fibers uh, have been investigated in this uh, geopolymer matrix. Actually, it's not such much uh, uh, these uh, articles connected with this topic, uh, and it's a quite uh, new one. Uh, as you see, mm, there was a Mm, some um, some trials with steel fibers, with short steel fibers, as well as a long one, use it in uh, this kind of matrix. Uh, very often, uh, the scientific uh, scientist uh, works with carbon fibers because they have a quite um, nice. Um, um, with nice mechanical properties. Also some uh, science, uh, some polymeric fibers uh, have been added to, uh, to this kind of composite. Uh, actually, there is a polypropylene that is also popular uh, as an addition for the concrete materials. Uh, some trials with uh, polyvinyl fibers and uh, others. Uh, only a few investigations are connected with natural fibers, uh, and was only just only flux fibers were investigated as a possibility to reinforce the materials for uh, 3D printing, uh, and the results um, the result was quite promising. Uh, and uh, this uh, summarizing this uh, different results, uh, different works connected with uh, this fiber addition, uh, they increased uh, uh, flexible strength even 
percent. It is a very impressive uh, um, result, uh, and it is uh, um, it also give us the new possibilities to uh, design something like curved shape. Um, because the main problems with building materials is that they started to be uh, crash after the loading in the direction of uh, flexor stretch. Uh, we have also the um, the fibers have also the negative uh, influence for the cracking propagation. That means that the material uh, is started to be more ductile uh, in case of uh, such kind of accident that. Uh, breaks our building element, we have uh, more time to evacuate uh, the people from inside or the animals from inside the building. Uh, summarizing this, uh, adding short fibers is a, a very effective way and it's with, it seems to be quite promising for 3D printing uh, technology. Uh, now I would like shortly, um, uh, shortly show you two projects. The first of the uh, of them is uh, um, is financed from uh, our Polish uh, um, National Center of the Research and uh, Development, with using uh, European Union funds. Uh, actually, IT. Uh, five percent uh, uh, financing this project came from uh, European Union. The rest is uh, um, co-funding from uh, our country or co-funding for pri private uh, industry. Uh, this, the leader of this project is Krakow University of Technology, uh, so my university. And we have also the industrial partner in this project. Uh, there is a building company who is, uh, uh, which is uh, mm, interested in uh, application, uh, the result of the project into practice. Uh, we work mainly on the material and the company uh, is focused on the construction, the 3D printing for industrial application. Uh, the main aim of this project is uh, design this 3D printing for um, large uh, building elements for the um, printing elements of this of the res residential houses. Um, this project is uh, actually in progress. Uh, we are after the first trials of the small uh, laboratory equipment. For this trials, we use this just a um, printer for our concretes, but it requires some modification. We also uh, try to construct uh, some devices, some handmade devices that uh, help us to uh, receive um, biggest elements. Uh, now it's just to investigate the properties of this, um, just the material properties. Uh, nowadays, uh, um, this pro the state of the project is that uh, this large scale, uh, the material trials are uh, ended and uh, this large scale uh, 3D printer is uh, uh, almost finished. And I hope during the next few months we started this uh, trials on this uh, quite big equipment. Uh, the second project is almost finished because it will be finished uh, on the end of December. Uh, this project is called uh, Urban Infra Revolution. And this, uh, and this attitude of the project uh, is a little bit different uh, than this previous one. Uh, this project is made by La Paranta City and quite large consortium. Uh, on this website, you may find more information about it. It is co-founded from directly from the European Union and under the initiative uh, Urban uh, Innovation 
action. And this, in this action, they are uh, focused on circular economy and also for solving some um, some social prob problems. Uh, and this is a consorci consortium. The consortium is made uh, from uh, very rec recognizable um, construction companies. Uh, it is, uh, for example, UPM, it is uh, NorCalc. NorCalc is a mining uh, company. There is also the Autotech. Uh, there is also invest. In, this company also invest in the mining industry. Uh, the main purpose is that materials for this project should be made from mainly from tilings. And actually they do it. Um, they test some uh, different receipts. Uh, one of them is uh, made from 100 uh, raw material from tilings. The other ones have uh, the, between um, 80, uh, uh, 60, 80 percent of uh, tiling uh, of waste material. Uh, the Fimiatek is a um, company who had experience with uh, 3D printing of concrete, and they uh, have a very important task to print, uh, to construct this 3D printer and uh, print some elements. Uh, in the project, they um, would like to, uh, the result of the project is actually noise barrier, a construction of the noise barrier. Uh, moreover, they would like to print some uh, elements for the small architecture of the city, uh, such as uh, elements for the skate park and uh, something like park bench uh, for uh, citizens. Uh, the first year were made uh, by Robotic Arm uh, from ABB company, and uh, the large format printer was made in, um, in the warehouse. Uh, belongs to the Fimatek company, and uh, this all elements uh, because of the problems with temperature in Finland because there are quite uh, low temperature was uh, printed inside. Uh, you have uh, some exemplary elements uh, on this upper uh, in this upper picture. Uh, as you see, there are um, there is a hole inside these elements and they have um, uh, and they have uh, um, and from these elements will be built this uh, noise barrier. Uh, summarizing these two projects, uh, um, this uh, they are quite similar but quite different. Uh, this, uh, both of them, they are financed from the European Union. As you, this, as you see, the scale of financing is uh, a little bit different because uh, on this uh, project in Finland, um, total value of the project is, uh, might, might, uh, is uh, quite higher. Um, they have a similar duration of the project. Um, both of them, they are actually three years project on the beginning. Uh, this Finland project uh, involved more um, organization and it was quite important because uh, uh, actually the mentality of the person in Finland is quite different than uh, in Poland and this project needs to be socially accepted. It is impossible to um, forced some kind of solution. Uh, this, uh, if somebody from the local society uh, will be against this solution, it probably will be just stopped. So this involving different organization um, is quite, have quite positively influence, uh, including the partners, there are two universities. Uh, one of them, the Labrador University, uh, was focused on the material research. The second one was focused just for the action connected with visualization. 
connected with supporting program and connected with uh, using um, uh, the sources, IT sources for uh, visualization for the citizens. Mm. Also the materials. Uh, materials are mainly uh, West, as I said, this main aim of this project was circular economy, so the closing the uh, material inside this, um, inside this, uh, closing the circulation of the material in uh, in this area. Uh, they decided to use the local sources. They decided to use uh, what is. Uh, um, uh, what is accessible in this region. It is uh, very good for, of course, for environment and for that kind of uh, activities, but it is also quite uh, problematic if we think about the scaling of this project because uh, uh, the West will be different in different regions. So uh, they must uh, develop new materials receipts if they would like to uh, implement uh, the same, implement uh, this um, project also in different regions of Finland, on different regions of Europe. Uh, in uh, our project, uh, we just uh, work on the metacolin and fly ashes. Uh, fly ashes also could be a little bit changeable um, according to uh, according to the um, according to the process that the particular power plant uh, made. Uh, but uh, this changeable is lower than in case of uh, West, uh, in case of application different uh, kind of West. And uh, fly ashes are in the Europe, especially in the West Europe, such countries as uh, Poland, as uh, Ukraine and as Turkey. They're quite accessible and they Actually, they are quite problematic West still. Uh, and also the laboratories uh, and uh, uh, scaling up was made a little bit different. Uh, and the uh, final elements are uh, not the same because in our case, there are elements for res residential houses in um, the case of Finland, there are small architectural element and especially noise wall. Um, shortly summarizing, um, uh, the 3D printing for the gel polymer is quite challenging, but it is a very promising area of uh, development. Uh, the 3D printing become more and more popular. Uh, the first uh, project connected with printing the residential house uh, actually are uh, become to reality. And I think it is a, a direction that will be very strongly and very rapidly developed in the next few years. Thank you for, uh, for the attention.